I greet you all with the peace of the Lord. This cold came to stay, right? Amen. Let's stand. They never passed me the the praise so early. I think it's a trap for me, huh? Fifteen minutes for eight. It's normally five to eight or eight. Amen. Matthew fourteen. Matthew 14, let's start the reading on verse number 13. When Jesus heard it, he departed from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion for them and healed them sick, their sick. When it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a deserted place and the hour is already late. Send the multitudes away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves food. But Jesus said to them, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And they said to him, we have here only few loaves and two fish. He said, bring them here to me. Then he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass, and he took the five loaves and the two fish. Looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples. And the disciples gave to the multitudes. So they all ate and were filled, and they took up twelve baskets full of fragments that remained. Now those who had eaten were about 5,000 men besides women and children. Amen. The church may be seated. My brethren, here we see a moment of an operation from Jesus' side. It was a moment that God used a situation in which he could show to the mankind his power. In the chapter, in the beginning of the chapter 14, we're going to see a situation very embarrassing. John the Baptist considered the last prophet. He was killed by Herod, king. And that brought a very difficult, delicate situation. So the disciples and Jesus in the beginning of being known and now John the Baptist is healed. So that's why the beginning of our reading is in hurting Jesus that. So when the this news arrived to Jesus, not that he was afraid, but he he moved a little, he, he distanced himself to see who's who. Jesus. He hopped on a boat and moved to a desert desert land. But the, the, the multitudes followed him. The disciples and the multitudes followed him. Aquele que está disposto, aquele que é definido, 
whoever is decided and it's up to follow Jesus having an experience not with the things that will be done why are you with Jesus those yes they are following Jesus there are many people following Jesus there are many people interested in being with Jesus but what determine these people is are their attitudes when they move toward God let's see here in this situation many after the the news the bad news they could run and hide but when Jesus he he put himself separately that shows that we we want it and we need to be always with Jesus no matter the miracle because the miracle will come anyways in another place in another circumstances so when Jesus heard that there was an example the king Herod was using that as a message like a heads up to put it down the message brought by Jesus about the new kingdom about the eternal life in the presence of God so the enemy of our souls he uses some circumstances and his intentions is to to quiet the church and to avoid the church and to know the work of the church is to make that you turn yourself into a stone on the way or a scandal for the society that's the intention of the enemy but we cannot be quiet why because the church has a mission the church has a role before God an important call by God before the world and our mission is to announce the second come of Jesus despise the miracles the circumstances if we are afraid or not because sometimes we feel like that we feel ourselves in a very delicate situation in our family in our finances trials struggles it's natural but we cannot be quiet about it the church of the church called by God raised by God that's being prepared raised by the Holy Spirit to go and live eternally in, in heaven she lives in the world but she needs to be different than the world the faithful church needs to show the difference this is the role of the church Jesus here now when he see the situation a multitude Jesus felt compassion because he saw that these people they needed a blessing they wanted a blessing and now Jesus was preaching transmitting the good news the gospel and he was doing his best to announce the new kingdom so the evening came so the concern also came 
Lord, many people are here. What we, what we have, to, what we're going to do for these people, for their eating? It's almost dark. We are far. It's deserted. These people die hungry. Then Jesus says, "They took. Jesus took what they had because it was an offering. It was a." A gift they gave, five bread, five loaves of bread, and a fish. That was his lunchbox. And and was this big fish is not? It's a lake, so it's a small size fish. So if you go out to the sea, you can grab huge ones. But we we see here a small one. So it might be enough only for this youth. But now Jesus takes this and multiplies it and operate a miracle. And now he fed 5,000 men without counting the woman and the children. Imagine. Because back then when they count the people, it was made only for the adult men. Now you do the math because in math I'm bad. So the church needs to have this. We need to have something for the multitude. Whatever you are contributing in your time, in your dedication, in prayers, in the reading of the Bible, when you offer yourself, when you reserve yourself, moments, meditation, when you take time of your busy life and you open a, a gap to have a moment with the Lord, God is multiplying. Today we prayed Everybody was praying for tonight's service. We had a, an early dawn. We have a moments that we pray during the day. So when you pray for the service, your prayer is not in vain. It was not to the ceiling of your house. It was not stationary, no. It was received by God. And God now receives that as an offering what is ours and the sum of what is mine and what what's yours our dedication our here I am our the miracle happens because the service is blessed based on that so you don't need to dance to jump to make noises the Holy Spirit operates in a very smooth way. The Holy Spirit doesn't force and push anybody's door, heart's door, but He operates in the silence with efficiency and proficiency, providing results in a way that you are involved and you turn yourself a person that is taken by the Holy Spirit, transformed. So the church needs to see that. It's a feature of the faithful church. The sum of my time offered to God with yours, ours, our devotion, it's transformed into a blessing. And there's no need for us to to be here with uh, like prepared words, have to keep the dictionary to understand. Is this a curse or is it a good word? It's difficult. 
You don't need to prepare a sermon, a message, elaborated message. No. It's in the simplicity that gods operate. So the multitude came, listened to the voice of the Lord, the message, the lesson, and he was fed materially too. Because God also makes miracles in our health, in our families, in our professional lives, in all the senses of our lives, all the matters, all the areas of our lives. When we expose ourselves and decide to serve the Lord, God makes miracles and we feel His peace. Security in what He is doing. That's why when the mankind approach to Jesus and come to the church, he needs to see a blessed place, a blessed environment. He needs to find a different church presented out there of whatever is offered. Some people make criticisms and when they come, they need to see the opposite. It needs to be a spiritual environment the church needs to be an oasis in the middle of desert of the desert have you seen that an oasis in the middle of the desert but it cannot be, cannot be a mirage it cannot be a, an illusion something that people say that exists but it does not imagine you in the middle of the desert without knowing nothing with hungry, thirsty. So then you see a place, yeah, there is a, a garden, trees, you can rest, you can rest underneath the shade and you can quench your, your thirst. Where you find this in the world? In the doctor, in the hospital, inside the clinic, where the doctors and the specialists are listening to you. So take this medicine. This medicine going to act inside your mind, your, your body, and you're going to feel the, the, the effect. And with the right dosage, you're going to feel better. No. What God does, He do forever. He does forever. The man cannot be addicted. In the things of this world, let's work on your mind. Let's work on the medicine, and we need to receive whatever is pure. The mankind cannot be depending of studies of the medicine and the science. We are called to be free, and the freedom is related to everything. It's free from all the dependence of the, the, the worldly things. We have nothing against the science, the medicine, and the modernity, but what I'm saying is we need to have an experience to depend only on God. The servant of the Lord needs to depend on the God. Whoever is taking the medicine, prescribed the, the medicine, never stop. Don't, don't, don't blame me and this is being recorded. Don't misinterpret what I'm saying. You are taking care, you are going to the doctor, that's okay. But I'm, what I'm saying is the operation of the Lord is the center of of the mind and the heart of the man. When God operates within the man, the operation is real. And the church needs to show that. The church needs to have. And we need to show this environment where the multitude will come thirsty, hungry, oppressed, tired, and will be fed. 
the faithful church needs to be this frame, what Jesus did there. So Jesus called the disciples and said, you say you want, you want me to let them go? I have delivered the message, the spiritual food was given, and I'll, I'll go. When I go, what are you going to do? You're going to close the doors? Close the establishment? There's no more Jesus. Let's finish. No. I'll teach you. Take whatever you have. What do you have? We have a youth here with five breads and two fish. So bring it. What we have is that. What a man needs to have is this. Whatever we have, the best, our sincere heart, our devotion. It's your time. And when we pray to the Lord, when we seek the Lord in prayer with a broken heart, God will operate a miracle. You understand? That's the difference. It's not so-and-so, which is the leader, the great man. No. Jesus departed. And there's 2,000 years that Jesus departed and the church is being preserved in the same level in different moments, different countries, different revivals. But the church is being preserved because the Holy Spirit is in control. The government is with the Holy Spirit. It's not with the leaders of this world because they, they have their time. The pastors, the preachers, they might be good or bad. You can talk about one or other. One or other that left a good testimony. Some, some are remembered, some not. And what about the other ones that you never heard about it? It doesn't matter. What is important is what the Holy Spirit is doing through this man. And the result is salvation of souls. People are being transformed. 5,000 people being fed, going to their houses with the blessing of the Lord in their hearts. See, this is the important thing. That's why the church needs to, to live this life of adding blessings today, tomorrow, after tomorrow. Trials, struggles, and victory after that. That's where we're going. The church lives in this way. And we have men prepared by God. You see our seminars, simple messages, simple sermons. In a fast way, you have, you have a certain time to dismiss this message and it has to reach the, the target. So, but the Holy Spirit is working and He is taking the points. At this point, enter in the heart of the man these perceptions and uh, the fire of the Holy Spirit seals the blessing and the man recognizes that he is nothing without God. And that's the operation of the Holy Spirit. The regret, the pain, the repentance of the sin, they plead for the power of the blood of Jesus and they reach their forgiven. Because Jesus has died on the cross so our sins can be forgiven. Jesus didn't die on the cross in vain. Jesus was not simply a martyr. No. He was and he will always be, until his second come, our Savior. And the church, my brethren, needs to have that. The church needs to, to feel that. It cannot be simply speaking out of the wind without purpose and without a, a change is, is bad. The religious people, they can talk all day long, but there's no change, no transformation. 
But the faithful church needs to be the one to say something that it was the result of the transformation. And when they speak, your testimony needs to endorse. It needs to speak louder. This is what the, the men around, the mankind will look. They will see if it matches what you're saying on what you're living. If you are going through a change, the people came, listened to the message, and the miracle happened. First, the man needs to listen to the voice of Jesus. First, they need to feel, I'll go after Jesus, I'll go with Jesus because he had a blessing for my life. We cannot be only on the benefit. We are with Jesus because He, whatever whatever comes and happens, we are with Him no matter what. In this time, there's no time to play games. There's no time to to go back. The, the people that leave the presence of the Lord, they don't feel good anywhere they go because they'll never find, they'll never forget the voice of Jesus. You can be in the world, but you're going to be frustrated for the rest of your life. Frustrated. Do you know what frustrated means? It's someone that is very disappointed. Why? Because after we met Jesus, we have the seal of the Holy Spirit and we have something within us that the world doesn't have. Lord, whatever I have, I'll give to you five loaves and two fishes. Multiply it. And Jesus does that. Amen? That's the, how the church of the Lord needs to be. It needs to show the difference. And for that, it's needed to show the Lord, to the Lord, that what you want is what He had. The water that will quench your thirst. The bread, but not from the bakery. It's the bread of life, which is Jesus. This is what He has for us. That's what He has for every mankind. And we cannot depend on what the, the, the world creates, the re religion creates, the famous people, the fashion, and the wave. Today is so and so, tomorrow is so and so. We cannot depend on anybody. The church needs to come to the presence of the Lord and to take possession of whatever is genuine, the gospel of Jesus that was and will be preserved in the Word of God, that always given to us in a special way, and it will be preserved in, in the pure way, in the original way. Because the doctrine is the same. Since Jesus was here with us, the doctrine never changes. And this is what makes the faithful church to stay still, preserved by God. Amen. May the Lord bless us.
the Lord has shown in two gifts of the Holy Spirit. And in these gifts, the Lord was revealing the position of the church, showing the way for the ones that are coming, for the ones that are approaching. So the man will, always, will only follow Jesus if, if they understand that what's presenting to him, the direction of the Holy Spirit, represented by the staff, the, the, the will of the Holy Spirit, so he will open his heart and receive. Otherwise, he will be like using a cane, something that represents the human uh, luggage, like the, the own endeavors. The way is Jesus, walk in it. That's what the church shows. The church was called to point the way and to help them to have experiences with Jesus and walk with Him. The responsibility of the church is that, to have men to have a, a, a closer encounter with Jesus. It's not the institution, per se, but with Jesus. Our experience is with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. The Lord has shown also the need of a man that is always someone is making use of the worldly stuff and he needs to leave that and to attach himself to the things of heaven, of the gospel. The presence of God with Jesus, wherever Jesus is, wherever Jesus were, we go. The mankind has the tendency to follow someone, a leader. The preacher Professor, doctor, so and so will be in Orlando, will be in Miami. Let's listen to him. You can listen, that's okay. Might be pretty, but later on you're gonna you might see something that will make you disappointed because all the men and every man will will fail. The failure is in us, in the mankind. The sin is within the humankind. But when we follow Jesus, there's no failures. Jesus, Jesus moved himself. He's, he, he went to a place and they followed. And there they were blessed. Because every time you follow him, you will be blessed. You'll be blessed. Amen? The business is follow Jesus. That's the big deal. Let's stand. Let's have a word of praise to the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the word, the, the spiritual food that you have prepared for us. We're going to leave your house with our souls satisfied because your word spoke deeply to your hearts. Blessed be your name for everything that you have done for your people, for your church, for the ones that seek your presence in spirit and truth. We serve a wonderful, marvelous God, living God, that is revealing himself to us every and each day. That's why we we'll render our praise and gratitude before your throne, especially for our lives, standing still, before your presence. And thank you for this new opportunity that you have provided for us to, to offer you our service. In the name of Jesus, amen. Receive, O oh Lord, our service in adoration to your name so you can be blessed us, blessing us, every and each one of us present here, every family member represented here, that your good hands, O oh Lord, can multiply what we have to offer you. And we ask you, Lord, that you can operate in our minds, our souls, our hearts, in our bodies as well, allowing us to be attached to your word and firm in your in your presence, listening to your sweet voice. Take us in peace and give us a night of rest in your presence. We pray in Jesus' name. 
In your name we say that the grace, wonderful grace of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations and the gifts and the virtue of the Holy Spirit can be poured out upon us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. We came to the closing of our service. Whoever needs a prayer, the deacons, the workers, the 845 maximum, the youth should be up in the upstairs for their meetings. Tomorrow, 2 p.m., we're going to have a get-together in the new church. So all the men that can be there, strong hands, strong arms, some, some trash that we need to put together and put outside, preparing for the dumpster. So whoever can help us, we can be, we're going to be there 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. So we can come back and have a chance to So there will be nothing heavy there. So there, there will be no excuse that you help there and you're not going to be in the service tomorrow night, okay? And first hand, listen. 16 of April, there will be a seminar in Boston. So prepare yourself in your work. You can buy your ticket. So later on, I'll tell them. So I'm telling here first. So April 16, whoever wants to go. What else? Tomorrow, 10.30. Again, for our Sunday school teaching, Book of Songs of Songs of Solomon. We're going to be praying. We are preparing ourselves also. Uh, how, what do you think about the seminar? January is better than December, isn't it? We're going to try a better place next year. So we're going to be always in January, okay? I think it's better after Christmas, New Year's. So we're going to prepare the, the next one. And we're going to have two more. One in April, another one in September. So not here, but in all the areas of the United States. So be praying for that. We're going to have a meeting with the pastors to, to define like a, a gap of six months, a space. Six, six months, we're going to get together in Florida. So let's pray so the Lord can guide us. We can go to Orlando, Tampa, Hollandale. We need to finish our Core Springs Church, right? So let's pray for this remodeling. It's in a very good phase now. We are about to put the drywalls. The basics was done. Now it's we're going to enter the the finishing. There is still some bureaucratic situations, but the prayer will help us to receive our blessing. To you all, peace of the Lord.